straightness, static stiffness, dynamic stiffness. I'm going to use this piece of half inch CPVC potable water pipe to explain to you how an arrow behaves under these characteristics. The first characteristic is straightness. It's not difficult to understand. It's the amount of out of roundness that the arrow shaft has at, at a given length. Static stiffness is how much the shaft will bend at a known length with a known weight suspended in the middle. How much does it deflect? That gives you an idea how stiff it is. The third and least understood is dynamic stiffness or dynamic spine. If this hand represents the broad head or field point, it has a known mass. It wants to stay at rest if it's at rest. If it's, if it's moving, it wants to stay moving. This is the knock-in. When we store energy in the bow, we have it available at the string. We don't have it in the arrow yet. Now this mass in the front of the arrow wants to stay at rest. So when we release the string, the string moves the knock forward, the arrow bends, and the arrow starts moving. There is a pulse. You see it bends like this. This is what we call the dynamic stiffness of dynamic spine. The more weight you put in front, the more it wants to stay in place, and so you get more bend. It actually oscillates when you fire. Now, if it's stiff, the more stiff it is, the quicker it will respond. But you're storing energy in that arrow shaft when it's bent, and it goes, releases, and it travels past zero point, just like your string passes zero point. It's the same basic concept. A guitar string does the same thing. So the more mass you have in front, the more bend a given material is going to have in the middle when you pop it loose. Also, the amount of energy, the behavior, the, the speed to which energy is being departed to the knock will have an effect over it. A gentler push will result in a less momentum change in the front. It's, it's in a fixed position. It wants to stay there. So we push it gently. We don't get too much bow. If we push it really hard, we get more bow. More bow, softer, a little bit. Here are two arrows, both of which are suitable for my setup. I have my bow set up at 68 pounds. This is the Eastern Axis 400 with boning veins. This is an Eastern Lightspeed 400 with boning veins. The slight difference is with this knock, this is a 3D knock. It weighs three grains more. These arrows are both 27 inch arrows. Using a 125 grain tip and using an 85 grain tip, we get these arrows within two grains of each other. Let's look at the hunting shaft selection chart. How is dynamic spine reflected in this chart? First most obvious thing is the mass at the front of the arrow. It resists. The more mass, the more deflection because that greater mass is wanting to stay in place. When you shoot the back end of it or the knock is being forced to the front, you'll get more deflection. So what do we see here? For a lighter tip, we get more poundage on the bow. This is appropriate for 35 pounds. Go to 150. See, it's 26 pounds. How does how? we put the energy into the arrow affected. Over here on the right side you see recurve and longbows. These are glorified leaf spring. Their functions are the same as a leaf spring. They are linearly dependent. You pull it back for every inch you pull it back you get a force built up in the spring. Cam bows don't work that way because, because of the way they break down. And the shape of that curve can affect how it functions. A medium cam is often softer than the single or the hard cam. They have a more violent push. In the demonstration when we pushed very very hard against the back end of the arrow, the knock end of the arrow, we got more deflection. So how is this reflected in the chart? Well a soft cam at 75 grains is good for 40 to 44 pounds, Easton says. Easton at the hard cam puts a little less into it, you see. They're compensating for that effect. 35 to 39. How are arrow length and stiffness related? Simply put, the shorter the arrow is, the stiffer it feels, the less it will bend. Take a 
short arrow versus a long arrow try to bend them and you'll you'll definitely see the the ease of which you can deflect the arrow so the longer it is the stronger it must be now how do we look at the arrow groups and see what we have well if we look over here in a we see we've got the 1813 and the 1716 aluminums and we also have a 780 red line they're good for a group a and look where group a is very low power low force slow short arrows look over here at the other screen the l's we have 300 carbons we have uh, 371 accs so we have a stiffer look where the l's are they're on this end of the chart. They represent a very stiff arrow. Now when you look at the groups, say we're concentrating in this area, we might see D, E, and F right there together for a 26, 27, 28 inch arrow length. Well when you look at D, E, and F, you'll see similar characteristics. Here's a carbon at 500. Here's a carbon at 500 and a carbon at 500. But not all of the arrows are the same in that group. Let's examine the two arrows I had before. One was an Easton Axis 400, the other was an Easton Lightspeed 400. Well, take the first one. The Axis had a 75 grain point. I come down to I hear it's 68 pounds. I come across at 68 pounds to 27 inches. That was my arrow length and I have an H. I come to group H and I see a 400 carbon is appropriate. Let's check the other arrow. It had a 125 grain point, so I come down to 68 with it and I come across, now this is the light speed, 27 inch, I've got an I, that's a different group. It too shows a 400 carbon. If you remember the two arrow weights finished at 370 grains. Okay, the axis being a thicker arrow was tipped at 75 grains. So we look at it, we find 74, 74 pounds. We come across, come across, come across, 27 inch arrow, we get an I. I's come down here to 400 carbon. We're okay. But now the light speed was tipped with 125 grain. Come down and find its position. 70 to 75 pounds. Come across, come across, come across 27 inches. J. Crap, we don't work anymore. Look at it. We require a 340 carbon. So you can shoot IBO and still not have an appropriate arrow. So we've learned that you can actually shoot an arrow that's okay by IBO's weight standard in your bow manufacturer but may not be an appropriate arrow selection for hunting. So if you're going to end up in a row, say somewhere we're 27 and we're jumping up and down between these guys right here, these groups, it does not hurt to pick an arrow from the next lower group. You're overspining it a little bit. And in many cases the arrow is the same between H and I. So if you're looking at a question between here, you might find you're just fine because that arrow is good for the next group of poundages as well. Don't be afraid to overspine your arrow when you're hunting. I hope that this little video is useful to you in some way. You may have already known how to read the chart. You may not have understood it. But the thing I want you to take away from this is your arrows are selected based upon your equipment, your equipment only. If your buddy's got an arrow, it may shoot fine out of his, it may shoot pitifully for your. So shoot your arrow match to your bow in your condition. And remember, you can go too light, but you can never go too heavy.